Hello and welcome to this time of worship. My name is Hilary Chrisley and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. As we find ourselves here together, it is the middle of August. Back to school time in our communities, with the excitement of beginning a new year with new friends, new teachers, new students, and in some cases, a new school. During our time of worship today, we will open up this special season of the summer to God's grace and blessing. Let us join together in thanks and praise for God's expansive mercy and love. Let us join together in the responsive call to worship. Come and worship, all you who love and serve the Lord, outsiders and insiders, old timers and newcomers, the young, old, and the in between. Come as you are, for this is God's house. A house, a house of prayer, prayer for, for all people, people. And, and God, God welcomes, welcomes each one who comes. comes. So we had a really good VBS, everyone. So thank you all for your prayers and for all your good wishes. We had a total of about 16 that signed up. Um, we had about nine different kids other than our own Sunday school kids who showed up. 
We got to do some Zoom meetings, some games and activities virtually. We got to send kids activities and at home projects that they can do and worksheets and puzzles and things of that nature every single day of the week. And we even were able to do a uh, school supply drive where we got some school materials for us so we can be able to support uh, La Fetra Elementary School so that they have school supplies. So we were able to get that at the end of the week. Um, parents and families just dropped it off. Um, and we also gave them a goodie bag as well so that they can take home with them. So overall, it was a really great, um, really great fun week. Uh, we got a couple of, of kids that want to take part in our Sunday school. So it was kind of a great outreach opportunity as well. But all in all, with the help of Miss Diane as well, um, we just we just had a really good virtual uh, VBS that really went well. So I just want to thank you all for your prayers and thank you all and hope you guys are safe. Bye. Bible stories and activities during Vacation Bible School celebrated Jesus' loving heart and how he helped so many people and how he asked us to follow him in caring for others too. One way we are following Jesus is by sharing school supplies for students at Lefetra School. This way students and teachers will have the supplies they need to focus on creating and learning in this new school year. Please join me in asking God's blessing on these gifts. God of all, thank you for these school supplies and the gift of love they represent. They are the colors and aromas of school and they are given in love of learning and in love of all children. We thank you for those who are providing the supplies. We thank you for this congregation serving as your loving heart. And we thank you for those who will receive them, for they are given in your name. Amen. It is officially back to school season on our calendars. This year, however, back to school looks so much different than any other time in our lives. Every student's family and everyone on a school staff are facing decisions on how to approach educational opportunities during these very difficult times. As a congregation, we offer encouragement, awareness, and support with this back to school blessing for a new school year. God of wisdom, we give you thanks for places and ways to learn. We thank you for this new beginning, for new books, new technology, and new ideas. We thank you for sharpened pencils and pointy crayons and crisp blank pages waiting to be filled. We thank you for the gift of making mistakes and trying again. Help us to remember that asking the right questions is often as important as giving the right answers. Today we give you thanks for these, your children, and we ask you to bless them with curiosity, understanding, and respect. We ask an extra measure of grace and wisdom for those seeking to learn or teach in less than ideal environments. Guide our youth and college students as they encounter temptations and frustrations along the way. May all be encouraged each day to know that in you they have everything they need to learn and grow this year in school. Bless our teachers, school administrators, custodians, tech support folks, as they navigate new ways of guiding and instructing students of all ages. We thank you for your spiritual gifts and grace in their lives. May we all, students and teachers, caregivers and parents, be guided by your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who as a child in the temple showed his longing to learn about you, and as an adult taught by story and example, your great love for us all. Amen. I can be loud or quiet, tall or itty bitty. I might live on a farm or in the city. Jesus is always gonna love me. Jesus loves me. be 
happy or sad, a guy or a lady, friendly or sleepy or silly or crazy, and Jesus is always gonna love me. You and I have received so much from God, food for our bodies and forgiveness to heal our spirits and our lives. Thank you for sharing your gifts through this congregation. We come to this moment in our worship when we live out our intention to give back to God a portion of what we've received, to express our own amazement at everything God is doing in our lives. Joining together wherever we find ourselves this day, let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise.
speak of what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Let us pray. God of all grace and wonder, with open arms you welcome us, and no one stands outside the circle of your mercy and love. And so we come to offer you our worship, to declare that you are our God, and that we are your people. Through the presence of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see you here. Open our minds to receive your truth and our mouths to speak and sing your praise. For you alone are God, worthy of all praise and worship now and to the end of time. We thank you that each and every day you are gracious to us and bless us and cover us with the radiance of grace. May your way be known everywhere, God, in the hidden places of our hearts, in the comfort of our homes, in every corner of our world and in the farthest reaches of creation. You transform us, you heal our lives, you renew the earth and every creature, and God, we remember with wonder and joy that your spirit is reaching everywhere, rejoicing in the liveliness of all living things, touching what is wounded or ill with healing power, gathering in the lonely, the lost, the least, soothing ancient animosities, creating and recreating a vision of hope. Come now, Holy Spirit, hear us as we worship and rejoice in you and lift our hearts and as you bless us to be a blessing to others. You ask us to follow you, follow you wherever you may lead, and we do in our hearts intend to follow you all our lives. For what the days ahead may bring, we pray the prayer you taught your followers, saying, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now from the words of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. From there, Jesus went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from those territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But he didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting out after us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then her daughter was healed. The Million Mom March was created by Donna Dees Thomases as a demand for stricter gun control, including a three-day waiting period for gun sales and child safety locks on guns. Her determination helped to pave the way for the March for Our Lives from the Never Again movement, with our own children speaking out, demanding a renewed assault weapon ban and a gun ownership records database. Persistent, pushy, proactive women all over the world fight and march and organize. They bargain, beg, and step out on behalf of children every day. 
Women have been doing this for a long, long time. And we meet such a woman in our gospel story today. There are some things, though, we need to understand as we are introduced to her. Those hearing the story in Jesus' day would understand the code words describing her. Canaanite, woman. See, the woman we meet is, well, a woman on her own, on the road where Jesus and his disciples are traveling, a woman in public without a male family member, a chaperone or protector, a woman who dares to initiate a conversation with a man outside her family, her country, her faith. Yes, a woman with all that the word carries with it, a Canaanite woman. Jesus and his disciples leave the area by the Sea of Galilee and they walk, oh, maybe 40, 50 miles north, northwest to the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. 50 miles away, but also a world away. They are crossing the tracks, so to speak. They are going into an area where you would almost reflexively roll up your windows and lock your car doors. Know what I mean? They were headed into Canaanite land. Tyre and Sidon. These were important cities in the region of Canaan. From, from the beginning, the Hebrews and the Canaanites were enemies. After crossing the Red Sea, the Hebrews had to conquer areas of the land of Canaan in order to settle there. The Canaanites traditionally worshiped Baal and had many rituals and practices that were abhorrent to the Hebrews. And so there developed an ancient and long lasting conflict between the two peoples. So what are these guys doing in a place like this? They stick out like sore thumbs. And Jesus had led them into this place, this space where they didn't belong, where Jesus and his ministry didn't belong. Didn't Jesus know he's gone just too far? Wasn't it time to just unobtrusively turn around and go back home? And then there she was, the Canaanite woman. She walks right up to them, raises her voice, and instead of asking why they're in her neck of the woods, instead of walking on the other side of the street, instead of calling the cops, she says, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, for my daughter is a demon possessed. She calls Jesus, Lord, son of David, the equivalent of Messiah, Savior, and she's met with silence from Jesus. Oh, but the disciples speak up and fill in that silence. The disciples complain, as they've been known to do on other occasions, send her away, she offends us. Jesus replies to them, I was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. Having heard Jesus speak to the disciples, the woman throws herself before him and says, Lord, help me. And then he speaks directly to her. It's not right to throw the children's bread to the dogs. It is not right to have the bread of life meant for the children of Israel given to Canaanite dogs. And she says undaunted, but don't dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table? Woman, your faith is great. Your daughter is healed as you wish. Now wait, did Jesus just use a racial slur? Did he just say that Canaanite lives don't matter? Did Jesus consider turning his back on her and her daughter just so he could go and help his own kind? Well, to help us better understand the story, we need to understand the Gospel of Matthew. The early Christian church had many struggles, and one struggle was with anyone who wasn't like us, religiously, geographically, politically, a Gentile. And we find outsiders, others, all around us. We have our circle of family and our circle of friends, circles of those who are sympathetic to our financial views and our political views. We have those in our circle and even in an inner circle. And those not with us, well, they're just outsiders. The question Matthew asks is this. 
Did Jesus come only for Israel, the people who had been waiting for the Messiah? What about all the others? They aren't from around here and they don't look like us and they talk different and they listen to different music and they are, well, different. As with the disciples, as with the early church, we too struggle with the question of who is in and who is out, who is acceptable and who is unacceptable. Nationally, we choose who is on the inside and who is on the outside. And then personally, we choose who is the outsider. And Matthew knows this about us all too well. His telling of the gospel story is basically about our tendencies to put people inside or outside our circle. There are those we aren't comfortable with and their presence confronts us daily. And you know who they are for you. The disciples face a question that day as they watch Jesus interact with a Canaanite woman they had followed Jesus to the lake. They had followed Jesus in the breaking of bread that fed thousands. And they had to now follow Jesus into this wrong neighborhood. Could they continue to follow him into this new territory? Can we follow Jesus to this place where sons and daughters cry out in gasps? For their mother? Can we follow Jesus to this place where women act on their own power? Can we follow Jesus to this place where people not like us are already in God's heart? It is interesting to find that when we all read the story, we have a, a human tendency to immediately spot the outsider in the Canaanite in the woman, the mother of a stricken child. But as we live within the story, we discover something else. We find ourselves in the story. Here we might look at the disciples and say, yes, yes, I have been like you. I have been like that. And I have followed Jesus as far as I think I can when it comes to this. See, there's my upbringing and my faith and my heart can only go so far with you, Jesus. And then maybe we look at the story and we say, I know how I've been like that Canaanite woman. Yes, I've been like her. I've come to worship knowing that God is able and knowing that I am in great need. And here, here is Jesus right when, right where I need him. I come and in my own way I cry out, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Hmm. Let me tell you a great mystery. Following Jesus, he will ask us to go with him. Go with him to feed many, many people over our lifetimes. Go with him to consider the way God cares for the birds of the air and the beautiful flowers in the meadow to follow Jesus in forgiving trespasses and in thanking God for our daily bread. Jesus will ask us to follow, follow him all the way, talking with, eating with, and blessing outsiders to the point where we may become ourselves an outsider, just like him just like Jesus, not on the safe, cushy, predictable inside, but on the outside, inviting, reassuring, forgiving, and loving. To see each person, to begin to see each as a child of God. See, we too struggle with accepting the ones we call unacceptable. We struggle with choosing inclusivity and risking openness and changing our ways, it's, it's all very scary. To live the radical demands of the gospel will turn our lives upside down and it will mean that we 
can know just where to find Jesus and that it will not be where we'd always thought that he would be. The Gospel of Matthew asks us to consider how far we will follow Jesus by showing us how far Jesus has come to be with us. Come to be on this earth. Come to live as one of us. Come to know what life is like for us humans. Come to know about joy and family and life and celebration. Come to know about ridicule and hatred and death. The Gospel of Matthew begins with its very first chapter, drawing the line from Abraham and Sarah through the ages to King David to Joseph the carpenter. And woven into those lines are names such as Bathsheba, Ruth, Rahab, each a mother, each from the land of Hittites or from Moab or a Canaanite. Hmm. The woman we meet today calls Jesus the son of David and asks for his mercy, and Jesus is quiet. Perhaps he's running through his mind his own genealogy, picturing Rahab the Canaanite, this great, great grandmother of King David, picturing her in the Canaanite woman in front of him now, who is calling him son of David. God's own promise fulfilled. Maybe the 12 disciples had a hard time following Jesus everywhere he wanted to take them that day, but she had no difficulty. Such great faith. And the disciples almost missed out on it. Let us follow Jesus to the tires and sidons of our lives. Let us follow Jesus all the way to those places with those people. Let us see the wonders of great faith we will find there. And let us see the wonders of God's amazing grace, for certainly we will find it there. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in our affirmation of faith. Some people are easy to serve, those we love, those who love us, those who are like us, those who show us their appreciation. But others make serving really hard. Those we dislike and fear, those who attack or fear us, those who are different, those who seem to just take and give nothing back. But in all of our picking and choosing, you ask a very difficult thing of us, Jesus. You ask us to be servant of all. How, How are, are we, we to, to do this? this? How, How do, do we, we serve, serve the weak, the poor, the neglected, and the strong, the wealthy, the, wealthy, the pampered? How do we serve the broken, the victims, the denied, and the breaker, the perpetrator, the denier? How do we possibly serve all? However it may be, Jesus, keep us from using our fear or confusion as an excuse not to serve. And, and help, help us just to make serving the, the most natural, natural response we have to anyone. anyone. And, and may, may our service join with that of others to gently change our world into a place where all serve and, and all are served.
Friends, as followers of Christ, we go with the love of God and the peace of Christ and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit as we go into the world in Christ's name, where we will discover God at work in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.